Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Herkimer Baptist Church. This we're talking about our love for God. How much do you love God? The Bible tells us we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength, aren't we? That's what all of us. When we come to know Christ as our Savior, that's our that's a commandment. He's not just suggesting that we do this. He's not saying if you feel if you feel right toward me, do this. He's saying you're commanded to love Him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so we're talking about the love for God. So I have that commandment. I have that responsibility, and I, I have that should have that desire to demonstrate my love for Him. But we closed out yesterday. We was over in First John, First uh, John chapter. Uh, 4 verse 19 and we just talked a little bit about that we love him because what he first loved us so we see that God set the standard and we talked a lot about that how that uh, we were dead in our trespasses and sins and all those kind of things but he sent his son into this world why because he for God so loved the world right so he did his part so we love him because he loved us if a man say I love God listen now Talk, but remember yesterday we talked about having assurance of your salvation. Give me some idea of what, how can I know that I know that I know? How can I know I'm saved? And if man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a who, liar. So you can't, and we're not talking about a brother here, we're talking about a, a brother in the Lord. And he says, if, if you say, I love God and you hate another Christian, you're a liar. So you, and if you study Scripture, as we read in Scripture, when you read the list of uh, sins, uh, list of uh, sins that are condemned, you know God lists some different sins at different times through the Scripture. A lying is based pretty well every time He has any kind of a list of sins. A lying is part of it. And so this is one of those things that it, God just does not care for a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, <laughs> you go to church with this brother. You, you fellowship with this brother, you're wit around this brother, and you you hate you hate him, you despise him. He says, in, and you, you see him, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? God is one that God's a spirit. And we can't see God in the physical sense, can we? We can't see him, but we can see other Christians. And how can I see another Christian and and not love him and say, I love God who I can't see. And that's this the question Paul, uh, John is writing here. He says, you know, this is just a question for you. Stop. Uh, give me an answer. Why? How can you do that? And uh, this commandment have we from him. Here's verse 21. That have we from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Now, if you, if you notice, uh, we read up here in, the, in verse 20 what he says there about, about not loving a brother. But when we get down to verse 21, he says, listen, he said, this isn't a suggestion. Okay. As a, as a Christian, uh, you, you should love your brother. Okay. He's not saying that. He said, what? And this commandment have we from him. You know, sometimes we get the idea that uh, see, if I, if I uh, really love I want to be best friends with him. You know, I want to be have close fellowship with him. But that's not necessarily the case. I, you can love your brother and uh, uh, another Christian, and especially if you're in larger churches where they have, a, you know, maybe three, four, five hundred people in there. And you can love a brother and not really truly know him, but you want the best for him. You'll pray for him if you know that he has a need, uh, if he has some sickness or family or whatever. You'll pray for him. You'll lift him up. You want the best for him. Okay, that's what he means when I said to love your brother. It's not that you want to, you know, uh, go on picnics with him all the time, you know, or do all these things with the family. All the time. No, it's the idea that you love him in a way that you want the best for them. And that's what he's telling us here. Because guess what? When I want the best for my brother, I want the best for the body of Christ, don't I? See, he's part of the body of Christ. How can I, how can I hate a part of the body of Christ? That's like saying, you know, I hate my left arm. You know, I, I hate my left arm. Well, I don't hate my left arm. I'm left-handed, so I, I would not hate my left arm. But the idea is uh, we're part of the body of Christ, so we need to lift up one another. We need to encourage one another. And if I have a problem with a brother, I need to get it taken care of. And there's a scriptural way to do it, isn't there? He tells us about that. If you have all against your brother, your brother has all against you, we, how to deal with these things. So this, again, it gets back to being a commandment. It's not a suggestion. So then we go to verse, uh, chapter 5 and verse number 1 see what he says. Whosoever uh, believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten him. So we see then the, the relationship between the Father and the Son, don't we? Whosoever believeth that Christ is the, Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that 
beget loveth him also that is begotten him. So we see then that the idea of loving the God, loving God, loving the Father, loving the Son. And uh, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So the idea is what I'm trying to do here. I'm gonna, I, we know that we love the children of God and here's the evidence. So was it, this is one of those things we was talking about where you can find evidence in Hebrew salvation. We know that we love the children when we love God and keep his commandments. Uh, Jesus, what he talked about, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And Jesus told us, he said, you know what, if you really love me, let's see you demonstrate it. I want, I want to see you do it. I want to see you obey my commandments. So that's, that was, that's our challenge. That's our commandment. He says, so we, we love God and keep our commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. In other words, God's, God's commandments are not burdensome. They're not meant to burden us down. They're really meant to set us free. They give us the opportunity to worship and to honor him and to be obedient to him. When we obey the commandments, that means we're being obedient to him. And what does God want? God, God doesn't need uh, big buildings. God doesn't need all. He wants, what is it? He wants obedience. He said, just disobey. Just do what I tell you to do. And I'll be as happy as I can be with you. And we can have great fellowship if you just be obedient. Because then God can use you. And that's how you can demonstrate your love for God, by being obedient and, and being willing to be used by Him. Allow Him to get in and work in your heart and work in your life in a way that's going to bring honor and glory to Him. And so we get to, I'm going to go down a couple more verses here. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. If you remember back over as you studied the, about the churches over in Revelation, Everyone it says, hey, he that overcometh. And so it's like, he that overcometh. How do I overcome? And we see it right here. It, whatever is born of God overcometh the world. So that's when I get saved, I overcome the world. That's what he's telling me right there. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe in it. And again, when it, the idea is believe, I'm, I'm, it's my faith. That's my trust. I believe that it truly is. He is who the Bible says he is. So those are the evidences of my salvation when I truly believe what God says in His Word. And we just, I, <clears throat> I mentioned that uh, yesterday we talked about the different things in the Bible that we can look at to see here in 1 John, rather, about uh, the uh, assurance of our salvation. I just want to read one more before we close out here. Over in the, first, in the second chapter of 1 John, in verses 15, he says, Love not the world, and neither the things that are in the world. If any, if any man love the world, what? The love of or the love for the Father is not in him. So there's an evidence right there. So it gets back to the idea of the preeminence. When, when God is on his throne, when we have him in the proper place and we love him like we should, then the world is pushed aside. The world, the flesh, and the devil is what gets in our way in our worship of God. Okay, so that's, that's a constant battle, but we can have victory over that. We're going to we stumble, we're not sinless, but we have the victory because we talked about it, being indwelled with the Holy Spirit of God, and we then have the strength through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to, to walk closer to Him. We, I talk about sanctification a lot. As I walk this pathway of life from the time of my salvation to the time of my death or my separation to the rapture, uh, I'm going to be drawing closer and closer and closer to him. I'm going to be I'm not being sinless, but I'm going to sin less as I walk with him. And that's our goal. So when I want to have a when I want to demonstrate my love for God, I do it it was obedience. All right? And when I'm obedient, then I'll be doing the things that will honor him and it will bless the Savior. So if you don't know Christ as your Savior, you just you need to let this be the day. Really you don't want to let another day go by because you don't know that you'll have tomorrow. Right now, you have this moment in time. You know, we get up in the morning and I thank God for the day, but I only have that part of the day that I know. I might, I'm looking forward to the rest of the day, but I only have that moment. I, we, we live moment by moment. We don't, we don't have, we live, you can look for the next hour, you can look what you're going to do later, but we only have that moment. We're guaranteed to that moment. And so right now, if God is speaking to your heart, you feel the urge, you feel the need to be forgiven of your sin. You need to, right now to repent. You turn to God. When you turn to God, you're turning from the world. You turn to God and put your faith and trust, believing you're a sinner. You deserve to die for your sin. But Jesus Christ shed his precious blood to pay the price for your sin. When I believe that from my heart, 
not just in my head, faith comes by hearing, I hear it, but I have to get it down to my heart. When I believe that from my heart, I have eternal life. I will never be separated from God. And when we read First John, and we get the assurance of our salvation. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you would be with each one of us, again, working our hearts and lives in a way that we can demonstrate our love for you. And for those that don't know Christ, we pray this would be the day, Lord, that this would be the very hour that, that they would hear the gospel. If they haven't ever heard the gospel explained, that they would hear from someone and they would come to know Christ as their Savior. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name.